if you've spent any time anywhere during the year of 22, you would have noticed that we are currently in the midst of multiple meltdowns worldwide. Crypto is crashing, the Zuck verse is dying, wars are ongoing, Elon Musk, need I say more, and of course, the AI takeover is getting exponentially worse, and the artists are quickly destabilising. Hoi there, I'm Rainhat, and welcome to the Nightmare. What is AI art? AI art is any artwork created through the use of artificial intelligence. There are many mechanisms for creating AI art, and that's where we stop reading the Wikipedia article. To put it simply, you type in a string of words into a generator, into many different kinds of AI generators, and it produces a random image based on a seed. Using the same string of words and different seeds, different images can be produced, some better than others. It's a bit like generating a Minecraft world, if you know how that works. With each iteration, you can tell this generator which stuff looks good and which doesn't. Then eventually with time, it'll get better. AI art technology has been around for a long while. If you remember three years ago, Gao Gan, NVIDIA's deep learning model, was getting quite a bit of attention from how MS Paint-esque doodles were able to be changed into, quote, photorealistic masterpieces, which is debatable. Where they get the photo references from to make these images, I don't know, but it's definitely a different ballpark to creating the artistic renditions we're seeing with AI recently. While there are a finite amount of ways to photo this specific scene, when you introduce levels of creativity, free will, and imagination, anything could be a rendition of this particular scene. The possibilities are near endless, and here lies the real threat that's entered the conversation. Three photographs from the same angle and position may look slightly different based on the photographer, but they're not going to be that unique from each other, and the slight difference is nothing to lose your marbles over. The value of a photograph anyone can take can only be so high. Now introduce a few hundred artists to draw the same photo, and they'll all be drastically different and worth a lot more, especially when straying from photorealism. Why? They are making things that can't be replicated by just anyone with a camera. Stars that show the scene in ways never seen before, they are unique and an alternative way to appreciate and experience the beauty of what something may look like beyond your basic human, open your eyes and look around experience. It's something anyone can do, but it's not something anyone can do well. The extremes from person to person can be night and day. It is not comparable to photography in the slightest. The year someone puts into photography varies drastically from the year someone puts into becoming an artist. This is where the value of art comes from. The influx of no AI. According to a Vice article by Chloe Shang, ArtStation, a platform which many artists from different industries use to show their portfolios, has been recently flooded with the famous no to AI generated images logo. This was a response to the site's recent featuring of AI generated artworks on their homepage. Artists were upset that this website that people use to showcase their professional abilities the website hosting work that they would show to employers, and work that employers would seek out on their own, was the very same website promoting artist impersonators. Can we please establish quickly that making AI art is equivalent to generating a new Minecraft world? You pressed a button, you didn't make the game. Just like how you pressed a button, and you didn't make the art. The article reads, to many artists on ArtStation, the juxtaposition of AI-generated images with their own work is degrading and undermines the time skill that goes into their art. AI-driven image generation tools have been heavily criticised by artists because they are trained on human-made art scraped from the web, and then effectively remixed or even closely copied it without attribution. ArtStation's response was frankly along the lines of, we will not stop or restrict the uploading of AI-generated art, but here's a little sticker you can put on your page that says don't put my work into AI mining data. How useful. We'll come back to ArtStation's proposed solution in a little while, but let's address the elephant in the room. The reality we have to face of it never going away. This is our new life now, and tomorrow it'll be different than it was today. As they say, the cat's out the bag, the baby's out the basketball, tubes out the toothpaste, it's not going back in. There's no undoing to be done. AI art will evolve, and it will only get better. The 
question here is, is it going to get better or worse for actual artists? Or draw slaves, as the cool AI kids are saying these days. Everyone is saying worse, except for a small group of people that you're not going to find on Twitter. Did you know people are already contacting their governments regarding protecting artists' rights about this stuff? I didn't find that out on Twitter. I think most sane, rational people can see that while things are messy right now, artists are living a very different lives than they were 50 years ago. Their value is far more complicated than a lot of generic work, and it doesn't just come from the complexities of their output or their level of skill. A lot of the time, the real value comes from them as a person. At least, that's what it's like for the lucky ones of us that have a presence online. Right now, the goal to eradicate AI art is a very naive and foolish one. Finding ways to reasonably coexist is what we should be looking into. If you think about it, generally speaking, there's a lot of reasons for your average non-threatening person to use AI. Depending on the scenario, it's like having quality of life mods IRL. There's a lot of things that a lot of creative people can't afford to do. Myself, for example. I can't afford to invest time into writing a book. I can't afford to invest time into drawing my comics. I can't afford to hire editors and I can't afford to learn how to code to make that one game I've been meaning to work on for years. If it's not obvious, I also can't afford to pay people to do these things for me. That would require having money. Ironically, being able to do some of these things would probably help me make more money or, or at least bring enough attention to my name to lead to that. I could, on the other hand though, get AI to help me write, draw, edit videos and code. These are commercial things that I think a lot of people could benefit from, but there are non-commercial things that could be beneficial too. Like making art for private D&D sessions or use, or art for a profile picture, or even placeholders to be swapped out later on for commissioned works. There will always be a desire for convenience. And when they come about to give people that convenience, they don't just disappear overnight. I'm not going to sit here and pretend if I had access to all the perfect AI to help me create the stories I've been forced to abandon for years that I wouldn't use it. Of course I would. I'm sure a lot of people would. Artists regular problems and it being solved by money we don't have. Let's look at the problem artists have been facing since the rise of social media art. Art theft. Tracing. Selling of work without permission, scamming, as well as many other things. Currently, people can steal your artwork and pretend it's theirs. They can trace your art and say they made it. They can put your work on t-shirts and profit from it. They can pay you or promise to pay you for your work, take the work and charge back or just never pay at all. What can we do about these things? Report it. Make an angry mob to harass the perpetrators if you're lucky to be popular enough. And finally... You can take people to court with money that you probably don't have. Art Station's cute little sticker is the equivalent of spitting into a wound and then rubbing dirt on it. Sure, it looks a little different than it was before, but the issue is still the same. As long as your images can be screenshot or downloaded, anyone can use them for anything. The reality is, you and people like you can't afford to pay lawyers to put teddy bear print plasters on your boo-boos. When push comes to shove, your average person can't do anything about having their work be abused by inconsiderate people. It happens every day, so do you just give up and stop posting anything at all? Maybe just put watermarks and no steal over everything you post ever. Most people are aware of the benefits of showcasing your work to potentially billions of people. It has a lot more benefits than drawbacks. Your career isn't over just because there are some idiots trying to make a quick buck off you. Honestly, I'd rather put a little signature on the side than cover my artwork with huge annoying watermarks that mostly just make the art uglier to look at. People can still photoshop it away if they care enough to, so when AI is involved more or less giving us the same problems in a different outfit, why is the freak out so much different and so much larger? I chalk this up to two things. Disproportionate outrage due to the common internet mob drama circle jerks, and the very real potential fear of replacement, and as a result becoming dispensable to everyone. Losing value. So the year is 2050, five, zero, and you need money. A job seems like a reasonable thing to use to obtain said money, and you happen to be especially skilled, so you go to an interview, as you do. 
Someone sits in front of you and asks you for your full name and date of birth. They type it into the system and congratulations! They were able to recognise your high skill and match your data to the requirement list for the very job you're applying for. Except the year is 2050 and this company has paid a little extra for the ability to copy your being in data form to sell you and replicate you to exercise these very skills you spent your life developing. The deal is you, the original copy, is no longer needed. You are no longer a person, but a product that somebody else is selling. Everything you've learned and experienced to that point to be who you are today is now someone else's to use and profit from. You didn't upload your existence to the database. Someone else collected tabs on you and put it there. So I won't sit here and validate this fear of losing value as a person. This is the fear that many artists are facing right now. This is a fear that all of us would potentially have to face in the future, as you commonly hear people say, we will all be replaced by technology one day. I'll do my best to present you with an alternative to that reality. If you don't get paid, how do you pay for the services that people are providing to you? If no one has jobs, how do people make money? There are benefits to keeping the circle of consumerism alive, and this is for every job. The rich afford to make products. People make the products for the rich and then get paid for making the products. People spend the money they make on products, which makes the people rich. We kind of need each other. If the little guy doesn't have money, the slightly larger guy has to and so on and so forth. If you let the little guys die out, then you'll have the if everyone's rich, no one is scenario. Where we end up from here is not going to be a reality where human life is one-to-one -one replicated by man-made instruments, because then human life would be pointless, and humans don't like being pointless, so we'll probably figure something out. The unfortunate current state of AI art is, artist names are being used in generations to replicate their style, and some AI art generators are made purely with one artist in mind, like what happened with Sam Does Art. It's pretty much the replacement example. People are saying he's famous, he'll be fine, but that's like crashing someone's car and saying, you bought one, you can buy another one. The morals are all wrong. Profiting off someone's own name and likeness has been a thing in lawsuit cases that is frowned upon. For example, Lady Gaga suing Moshi Monsters over their Lady Goo Goo character, and she ended up winning the lawsuit. While I'm not 100% behind suing people for parodies, it just goes to show there are things in place that protect people from others benefiting from your own personal brand. Unfortunately, the rich suing the rich happens a lot more than a poor starving artist suing large art mining companies. I'd blame this on the cost of legal fees yet again. This is also why I think there shouldn't be a heavy reliance for laws to fix all of our problems. In reference to the artist problems I mentioned before, Laws are nice, but most people can't take advantage of them if there are nobody with a net worth of three cat hairs and a stick of chewing gum. Sam Does Art has two million followers on Instagram. What do you think happened to the person trying to make an AI generator using his name and likeness for attention? An angry mob of Sam stands harassed them and that AI bro dipped off the internet. Some people are saying this was poor on Sam's part to call them out by name, but I say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. What did you think was going to happen? My point being though, Sam is not just someone who posts a picture and logs off. He has a personality, an image, a YouTube channel where he talks as himself to people, arguably an entertainer first before an artist. If artists are at risk, so is social media at large. As long as we have these presences online, we are worth far more than our drawings are alone. A creator and their creations amplify each other. You can't take one away and be left with the same thing. Art alone doesn't make your average person want to support and protect you. The faces behind good, mediocre, and bad art all make the difference. Think about Xabio Arcs or Chala. They both started off with pretty bad art and still ended up doing really well. But I digress. There's another thing I must bring up that I want people to really think about. Can an art style be stolen? And is it only stolen when a name is attached to it? Or is it only stolen because you said so? This debate has been in the process for years, so let's finally put a sock in it. Art styles. Part of recognising the reality of AI art being around from now on is acknowledging the counter-arguments. 
what is an art style, how is it made, and who owns it. Of course, your style is how you express your visual idea. There are trends in the way that you do things that can lead to artworks being recognisable as being made by a specific person without prior evidence of who was behind the work. That's the goal. How are art styles made? Well, simply, you start repeating certain shapes and techniques. This might be stuff you believe to be your own, or stuff you've seen elsewhere and implement into your own work. The big question, who owns which art style? If you deny that the outside world can influence people directly and indirectly, then you are denying reality itself. The how to draw anime books we grew up with, the YouTube tutorials, art challenges and art books, our teachers, friends and people we look up to. Whether you like it or not, the way you do things is intentionally and unintentionally influenced by others. If you are lucky, your art style will look objectively unique. But the truth is, a lot of artists draw and do very similar things. Big hips, big head, small waist, boxy fingers, L-shaped noses, floating bottom lashes, square legs, removing pupils, and those spiral shapes people like drawing on knees and elbows. The list goes on for miles and miles, and I know some of you artists are sweating buckets as I rip apart your so-called unique art style. My favourite example is Kawanasi and Orange Seikai. When they were dating, their art styles were almost identical. Honestly, I sometimes mistake them for the same person. Just look at these images and tell me they're not made by the same artist. Arnsei Kaya's style has changed since, but I have more examples of people mimicking each other like this. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, a lot of people could be argued to have stolen someone's style. I think your average non-artist would have a much harder time telling who from who. So are we going to start aggressively policing styles now, or can we just all agree that intent is far more important than the outcome. If an artist is studying one person's style and trying to profit off that person's name and business, they are a shitty person, and we can all agree that that's not a nice thing to do. If two people on the opposite side of the world just so happen to draw extremely similar, if not the same, they probably didn't steal each other's art style. Being on the internet, it's only reasonable a lot of us get exposed to the same popular art and start to draw inspiration from the same popular stuff. It's not often that I encounter art and think, I have never seen this style before, it is so unique and exciting. Honestly, I very rarely, if ever, have felt this way in recent years. To be fair, to be completely honest with you, I would compare Samda's art's art style to Disney. If Disney and Loish had a baby, it would be Samda's art. Is Sam a style thief now? Does Sam need to pay Loish and Disney now? No, of course not. The reason I mention this is to give an alternative version of some of the anti-AI stuff we're seeing. If AI can genuinely, transformatively, take inspiration from many images of all types from different people and create something truly unique, can we be at peace? Because this is just what your average artist does. Before you lose your marbles, I'm not saying all AI is transformative and flawless as of now, but I think it has the capacity to be in the future. And we should aim for that and encourage the development of these kinds of models. We all take part in many different ways of expression through art, and while it's not comparable to a computer in the slightest, we definitely do not pay every single person that's inspired us. If we can be truly transformative with our works, and AI can too, wouldn't putting restrictions on that potentially restrict us as artists further than we already are? On top of that, people's art styles change all the time. Do they own every single style they've ever had? And does the most popular artist own it now? Or is it the one who did it first? If someone is known for drawing square ears, can no one else do that? Can you not see how silly this is getting after a while? No one should be able to sell your ability except for yourself, but if it does happen, and it may, appreciate the many voices you have behind you supporting you in your achievements. Honestly, I think it's going to be better than getting laws that most of us can't afford to enforce. If little Charlie wants to make a Genshin Impact style OC and, has, and not get sued into oblivion, there's some reasonable ground to allow AI to be able to do that too. And what's it really worth at the end of the day? 
AI art is going to get cheaper and cheaper, so honestly, I advise you to never ever pay for that stuff. The art miners didn't pay for the art, so why should you? The original has always been worth more in every scenario till now, right? I doubt AI is going to completely flip that on its head. If a computer made an image, there's an argument that the computer can't own the copyright to it. So the chances are, people won't be able to claim copyright ownership of AI-made images either. If that's the case, it would also be highly unlikely for big companies to be able to claim copyright over AI art or characters. Companies tend to like owning stuff that they make so they can stop other people from using it in ways that they don't want or agree with. But you will only see how that turns out though. I honestly think the internet has the ability to grasp that someone might be doing something morally wrong and be against it for that alone. If you have a community behind you, AI art will not suddenly make that community disappear. As long as you have your worth behind your production, your community and the art community as a whole will work together to combat people being taken advantage of. The internet's virgin protest and outrage and my chad not worrying about things I can't control. To put it simply, those of you crying about the current state of events need a slap on the wrist. Your virgin tears are nothing against my chad sleep it off and move on persona. Do like the monks and don't worry about things you can't control. Focus your attention on what you can do and be the change you want to see. Know a penny's worth, a brick in a building, a card in a card tower. They are small on their own, but without them, the bigger picture would be a different one. Support artists, to put it simply. If someone has 1 million followers and half of those people give the artist 20p a year, that's an easy 100k a year for that person. If someone has 1,000 followers and every one of those followers gives the artist £4 a month, that's an easy 50k a year. You don't need to be rich to support people, but helping this person grow in any way through money, comments, shares, likes, etc. It makes all the difference, as small as you may seem in the bigger picture. That's what you should pay attention to if you can't do anything else. The telling murder is not to murder scenario. Some people's solutions is telling people not to use AI art. These are the same people who think saying no to racism would make them a hero. Words don't change people, people change people, and adults don't get influenced as easy as the youngins or the elder population. So sometimes the only person that can change is the person themselves. I think there are benefits to AI images that are just being ignored. Clients can approach artists with AI designs to aid commissions. Artists can use AI as an underpainting or for color palette or visual inspirations. Some artists aren't designers, so AI can help them design things that they can reference from. Artists love photo bashing and collaging and drawing over stuff that they don't own. AI can just be another tool instead of a threat to everything. The response. It comes down to this. People like AI because it's cheap, but it can be free if you have functional brain cells. It's extremely accessible. Some people don't care about artists, but honestly, screw them. They were the same before AI, they'll be the same during and after. People can see benefits to working with AI art as a tool, and those who make art themselves are fully aware of this, and even so, can still enjoy making art from scratch with or without the presence of these AI generators. Some people think the AI stealing art styles argument is dumb, and I think the intent matters, but I totally understand that it's dumb rebuttal. Determining what is transformative has always been an issue when it comes to rights and copyright laws. We definitely don't need to make it more difficult for artists to have creative freedom when fighting against the machine. And a lot of people see a future in AI art, and honestly, I do too. As long as it's done right and we support the right people, it'll be just fine. After all, if AI learning becomes less like copying, we'll be on a better track, won't we? On the other hand, people are passionately against AI art for using years of people's hard work without compensation. They think it'll take away the future need for real artists. I don't think most artists compensate people for everything they've ever been influenced by, so I don't know what to tell you. There's obviously a right and wrong way to go about this. But if AI is producing art influenced by enough sources that one person can't be attributed to the output, then I don't see a problem with it. 
people don't want others claiming AI work as their own, and if they do, they are liars and thieves. I don't think it's fair to claim something 100% as yours that isn't, and that's that. There's no need for the extra drama though. People think AI has no place on portfolio websites and professional settings. I agree. I also wouldn't want inauthentic content muddying the waters of professional websites. People feel so strongly about this, they will gladly send death threats to anyone using AI in a successful, profitable way, which is a shitty thing to do. The reality is, this is not a black and white situation, and not all AI art is made the same. Like I said before, intent matters. If the AI is truly, truly transformative, let them have it. Stuff is constantly changing, so others can have more opportunities in the future. Change would happen with or without AI. Finding work is harder for human translators, finding work is harder for web designers and studios, but people are still out here hiring them, even though it's been made easier for us noobs to make things ourselves. V-Roy didn't eradicate the need for individual 3D modelers, it just gave the people who were never going to pay thousands for a 3D model a cheaper alternative. And guess what? As popular as it is, some people would rather have nothing than a V-Roy model, since it's just not what they're looking for. I honestly think the people who have been spending money on artists for commissions are not going to stop because a shittier, freer version is available. The people who turn to that were never going to give money to artists in the first place. They aren't your problem. No amount of tantrums, death threats, or crying will make bad people cease to exist. And as long as the internet exists in the same community-driven format, your worth has not dropped with the new introduction of AI art, because you are worth far more than your talents alone, and there's a much bigger picture that people will always fight for. The future, good, bad, and the ugly. Here we all stand and look towards an uncertain future. I genuinely believe it won't be nearly as bleak as everyone seems to think. What's popular now may not be popular five years from now. The AI art that's being created now might not be the kind of stuff people want in the future. Artists will always be needed to fuel AI generating. If the creations have to stay relevant, an artist will always make new things first before the AI can use it to train with and produce with it. It's like we constantly have the cheat codes for being ahead. I think the training of new AI generators will become simpler and easier and we'll one day be able to make our own using our own art and creating things that we can claim to be ours. Things that can speed up our workflow. Things that other generators can't produce without our dataset. The best thing we as artists can get out of this are tools to make our jobs cheaper and easier. Most of us are already taking advantage of AI in our work. For example, being able to colour in your line work with the click of a button instead of having to lasso and scribble everything in bit by bit. I love Crota's colorized mask. It's insanely overpowered. And just as a comment on AI as a whole, us all being able to do things we wouldn't be able to afford to do due to financial or time constraints sounds like a great thing to me. Convenience can be a huge game changer for a lot of people. Finally, we have to give our condolences to the people we lost along the way. Some people took one look at this situation and thought, Wow, I guess there's no point being an artist anymore. To that, I say, wow, I guess there's no point being intelligent anymore. Being an artist has never been harder. Please find me one person who came out of nowhere, drew something nice, posted it online, and immediately became well-known, popular, and rich from an immediate influx of commissions. Find me one person, and I'll find you a hundred, that applied to art school and got immediately rejected. You don't have to be a bad artist to be rejected from art school. You don't have to be good at art to find popularity online. Being an artist doesn't work the way you think it does, and AI art isn't going to change that. The market for 2D artists is insanely saturated and hard to get into. That's why I do 3D, since there's less 3D modelers, it's easier for nobodies, like me, to become somebodies. People want certain content, and if there's a hole in the market, you better be the first one to fill it before you get buried. Anyway, let people use their AI art. If they choose to sell it and end up selling copyright stuff, that's on them. The amount of us that have used Google Images and used copyrighted pictures in our YouTube videos or copyrighted music, yeah, there's a lot of us. We're all here taking advantage of each other and pointing fingers. You know the saying, 
you point one finger at someone else and there's three pointing right back at you. Just try to do this AA stuff in a reasonable way.